This will be the best racing weekend in racing is life history. And I'm not exaggerating. Everything will happen, and I mean everything. A crazy track, a high risk overtaking, in two races that will be decided only in the last lap, against a European champion and autistic driver. Demolition Derby maneuvers with high penalties. And all of this in front of 50,000 spectators. In the midst of insane vehicles, you will laugh, you will cry, you will rejoice, you will be angry, you will be amazed. Because this is motorsport. Because this is racing is life. to start from because there are so many things to say about this racing weekend that I, I truly I, I thought about this video I thought about how to start this video but I, I, I couldn't find a way so the track Brent Satch I know it from their simulator it's like this and when you see it in real life it's even more it's like a roller coaster and I didn't drive it yet I just walked it and we walk it together after during this video the, 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 the people, 50,000 spectators expected. There is the Luna Park, the, the games and... Okay, but let's put all this in context. Today is Friday, the day the weekend starts. We are in Brentsatch, one hour from London. We came here in the van and left Italy on Wednesday evening. Driving there only one sitting was impossible, so we had to stop and sleep without getting robbed once again. Yeah, because when I was going to Valencia, we were robbed. Okay, in memory of the last time I've searched an area sicura per dormire. Spero sia sicura. Vabbè, sono le 3.20. Vuoi solo morire nel letto. Ciao, Matteo. Per fortuna ti ha fatto compagnia. Ma vaffanculo, hai dormito. <laughs> ok, so we stopped to sleep close to Besançon in France. And the next day we left. And to get to England, you have to go through the Channel Tunnel. And Theo is afraid of tunnels under the sea, so... Sai quanti incidenti mortali ci sono stati in questo tunnel negli ultimi anni? No, non mi interessa. Ho crollato un sacco di volte. No, 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 it's not true. It's perfectly safe. Ah, laggiù c'è il tunnel della manica! Wow, questo è il treno, sembra una roba futuristica. Eh, sembra un film dell'orrore. Senza finestrini. Perché è proprio il treno che va sotto l'acqua, eh. Basta. Vedrai i pesci dal finestrino. <ride> That's not true either. I thought it was a tunnel where we drive. Instead, andiamo dentro un camper. Dentro un treno che va dentro un tunnel che sta sotto il mare. Claustrofobia! <laughs> then you come out to the other side, another hour on the road, remember that here everyone is mad and they drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> Et voila, we are at Brands Hatch. The paddock with the pits is very small, it's in the inside. While the paddock for the public is huge and it's on the outside. And look where we are with the van. Tell me if there's a better view. Anyway, here we go, FP1. Let's explore the marvelous Brands Hatch circuit. Yeah, I don't know if you figured it out, but we're racing at the short version of Brands Hatch. Just five corners, 1.9 kilometers. And this means that a lap is very short, under 50 seconds. So the times will be incredibly close. Qualifying will be a matter of milliseconds and the race will last 31 laps. 
Da avere curva 1 mi sembra importante perché in curva 1 è capace che ci lasciano due cose. Adesso lo vedremo poi sì. con la telemetria ma è che ci lascia due Punti di frenata, curva 1 dove freni? Tra il primo e il secondo cartello. Eh, a chi guardi i cartelli? A sinistra. Non lo guardo a destra. No, guarda a sinistra, ci sono i cartelli bianchi, sono tre, freno tra il primo e il secondo. This track, although short, it's extremely difficult. Turn 1 especially is unbelievable and you will see it soon. So while I'm discussing things with Max, the other team car is coming back in and unfortunately it crashed during the free practice session. But meanwhile I have other things in my mind because... Adesso abbiamo un treno di gomme nuove perché... Ragazzi ho qua... Va forte gli altri quindi... Mi devo giocare tutte le carte che ho. And the answer is yes! We got a set of new tires. This year I'm competitive and I want to win this championship. I drained all my savings and decided to get an extra set of tires for each weekend, which at the end of the season will cost an extra 12,000 euros. Wow, I'm making huge sacrifices for this season and I'm putting all my energy and money into it. So, new tires, I understood the track. Now I push beyond the limits and I take any possible risk because I want to make the best lap time. There is something special about this car because it gives you the peace of mind and the confidence to dare and push beyond all limits. It's like living a dream because I'm free to dare and I'm free to push. Just like Valencia, here in Brands Hatch, today, best time in FP2. I'm flying, guys, I'm flying! Come on, come on, yeah! Bravo, grazie, bravo, quando sei uscito in curva 3 io stavo là fa... mi sono cagato addosso e ha detto ecco là, così ho chiuso l'occhio lì mi sono cagato addosso anch'io un paio di volte ti dico ho pensato di avere di aver cagato fuori dal vaso della macchina infatti dopo. sul corso da mano ho detto senti di non esagerare perché è il primo tempo infatti, allora <ride> dice non mi ha visto se nessuno, Manuel mi dice sta roba è perché qualcuno l'ha segnalato a Manuel ma <ride> in fact at one point Manuel of the radio told me don't overdo it <laughs> oops but you know on such a short and technical track it's essential to get every little detail right every bit of the track every crack every kern everything is essential to win And now, after more than 60 laps, I'm going to tell you how mad this circuit is. Look at this. I mean, you come from a straight where you do this. You go down and then you go up. Then you come here where you have to break. You don't know when because you don't see the corner. And then at some point, you find this. You go down. If you break too hard, you lose the rear. And I lost it a couple of times. When you, you say, okay, I'm going to die, and that moment, boom, full throttle. Then you go down, and when you go downhill, immediately uphill, and the compression squeezes you like a can, and the car touches the ground, and wow. I don't know if you can understand it from the video, but With the scooter, this electric scooter, I can't go this way. <laughs> I need to go down and walk and push it. And then we get to turn two. So you have to break going up. So you feel the car brakes a lot. And then release the brake and just a bit of trail braking until the apex. You have to bring a lot of speed into the corner. Slow down the car just a bit, just a bit, just a bit. Turn the car and boom, 100% throttle. Now, after another downhill, you get to this corner. It's in the middle between upshifting and not upshifting. So for us, it's better to hit the limiter for 10 meters in second gear. You 
see how colored are these curbs? Because the guys from the track paint them after every day during the race weekend. So this, super sharp. They told us at the briefing that if you cut too much this corner, you risk to puncture the tires. Those of you used to drive in the simulator may say, okay, this is the left hairpin that then brings you to the Hogwarts forest. No, <laughs> because we drive in the short version of the track. We did this kind of shaking. And you break on the curb for the last corner, which is hard in every part of it. And then while braking, you have to point at the crash. You start to accelerate a bit, pointing the wall, and 100%. When you feel you have traction and you almost get to the gravel, you start to turn. Then you got to the main straight, which is not a straight, <laughs> it's a big turn, but I think we call it straight because it's where we start. So the race here starts on a big corner, which then becomes a hill and a hard corner. I just love it. This is awesome, my God. Wow, if I'm dreaming, please, I beg you, don't wake me up. One of the great things about motorsports, or worse one, depending on how bad the day is for you, is that it's unpredictable. And from one second to the next, everything can change. By everything, I mean everything. You can be first for the whole race and break the engine on the last lap, throwing away a whole years of work like it happened to Toyota at Le Mans in 2016, so that, that's really bad luck. But you can also be second for the whole race and win at the last minute because the first one has blown the engine, so then you're lucky. Bad luck in the end is like a coin. It spins, 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 and only when it lands do you know if you've won or lost. Well, here in Euro NASCAR, as you know, the car is shared between two drivers. And many of you asked me, what happens if one of the drivers break the car? The other one will not race? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. The steering broke during uh, max qualifying and I don't know if they can fix it in time for my qualifying. I don't know what to say. It, it all started well, best time in FP2. Everything was looking good for the qualifying and now it's all gone because of pure bad luck. Okay, anyway, let's not despair. There are two possible scenarios. Head, the power steering is broken. It takes one hour to fix. I skip qualifying and start last. Tails, only one power steering hose broke. It takes 20 minutes to repair it and I managed to do the qualifying in the last minute. Head or tails? Head or tails? It was just a hose, yeah! The mechanics did an incredible job in record time, changed the hose, car finished at the last second before the green light, we go to the qualifying. New tire, 10 minutes, but I need less than one minute. I only need 49 seconds to do that one lap that could be worth the pole position. straight of Brands Hatch, which is actually not a straight, it's like a long, long corner, third gear, fourth gear, we get almost to 220 kilometers an hour, we got to break in Paddock Hill, the hardest corner in the whole circuit, very, very little train braking until the apex and then flat out in the compression and then we get to turn two, we break very, very late, we bring a lot of speed inside the corner, I lock the rear a bit, ah, 
I made a little mistake on the throttle here. I just, I probably lost half a tenth, but I keep pushing. It's a good lap, it's a good lap. We get in turn three, not very hard on the braking. Full throttle on the exit, be careful to the track limits. And then we get to the last part of the corner. We get into this kind of chicane. We jump on the curb on the left, a bit of throttle. We brake on the curb on the right. We go wide, we turn into the apex, and then we go early on the throttle, but not too much, because if we oversteer, we lose traction, and then we will lose speed, and we lose some precious time here on the main straight. I stay on the right, it's a very good lap. This is a 49.0, my fastest lap here in Brandsatch. What a great lap time. With this time in the pro, I would have started third this weekend, and in my class, in the Euro NASCAR 2, I am going to start third. Fuck, they screwed me over. I, I thought I did a great time, but somebody did better than me. In P2, Ulysse Del So, who I'll tell you about in a moment, and first, Vladimir Tsiorcis. Him, once again. <sighs> Damn, I, I was hoping to do better, but nothing. The race would be another story, but look who passes in front of my box. Me conozco. <laughs> Okay, I will tell you about it in the video of race 2 because you will discover some shocking things about these English legend cars. And in the meantime, I lock myself in the camper to think about what I did wrong in the qualifying. And Dean Gerbach come to visit me, the chief of the marshals, the one who decides if and when to assign penalties. Well, he's one of those rare people to find in motorsports. In the paddock, he's super good with everyone, always friendly and willing to chat about motorsports. But when he is in the race direction, he becomes an adamant referee, as he should be. If you end up with him in the restoration room, it doesn't matter who you are, and it doesn't matter what you look like. You are just a car with a number. If you're right, you're clean. If you're wrong, you're done. Period. So he came to see me because... Ti voglio solo mostrare perché giro numero 3 era cancellato. Ah, sono uscito fuori l'app. Sì. Anche te, anche Zosis. Sì. Ma il suo giro è più veloce. Scusate. Non ho mai avuto una foto dell'autovelo in seguita mia, però ho la foto di me che faccio tra Klimis con la NASCAR. Questa me la incornicio, eh. <laughs> well, he came to explain me why they cancelled one of my qualifying lap times, and luckily it wasn't my best lap, so I always start third. Now, as in Valencia, the Euro NASCAR Pro will run before us, so I get ready to go to the starting grid and cold shower. Max will not race race one, because he has labyrinthitis. Such a bad luck, my poor Max. I I'm really sorry for that. And in fact, the car wasn't even lined up, but it was left alone at the pits. So my thoughts are with you, Max. You will make it up for Vallelunga. So at this point, I enter the grid and place myself in front of Roca's car, which will start in pole position to sign autographs. Wait, which autographs, if nobody knows me here? Well, maybe you're forgetting that we are at Brands Hatch. Forget the Italian races, because here, when it comes to organizing events, they kick everyone's ass. 46,900 people in two days. 46,900. And don't think it was free, because the cheapest ticket was around 25 pounds. But why would you pay to come to Brands Hatch? Because this is what you will find. All sort of cars rallies, fun fairs, attractions, cosplays, shops, stalls, bars, restaurants, and of course, motorsports. Euro NASCAR legend cars, pickups, plus other special cars on parade. Multiply 46,900 people by even if it's just 25,000 pounds per person. Yeah, <laughs> we Italians just have to learn from them. And meanwhile, the situation on the grid is getting crazy. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Where is Darth Vader? Where's Darth Vader? Is his day off? Oh, damn. He's got, he's got a lot to do in the galaxy. Yeah, I know. He's to run, so we have to give him a day off every now and then. Okay, sir. Thank you. Look <laughs> at the people on the grid. This is awesome! One word. Incredible. I felt like jumping in excitement. The amount of fans who rush to the grid to see the car up close, to meet the drivers. Even though nobody knows me here, I sign more autographs here than in Italy. And the kids all line up waiting for their turn politely. By the way, really? You think this is a lot of people? No, 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 hold up everyone, this is Saturday. And today there were less than half of the people. Because tomorrow, Sunday, the track will explode. Wait, no spoilers, you'll see a race too. 
So basically, I enjoyed my first real brand touch, Sea of People, and in between autographs and stormtroopers, I then took a tour of the various cars and also caught all the drivers of the two signing autographs and taking photos, and among them, my opponents. Siorcis, who will start in pole position, and Delso, who starts in second place. Ulis Delso, an incredible guy. Incredible because he's very fast since he won the European Championship in 2018, but even more incredible because he's a special guy. Born in 1997, he didn't speak until he was six, and no one understood why. Always alone, always isolated, super introvert. The doctors said nothing because there, there was nothing wrong physically with him, so they just thought it was different. At school, he was in his own world, and it was all very difficult. But things, however, changed when his parents bought him a cart. That boy, who never smiled, who never expressed emotions, smiled for the first time. Something incredible had happened because finally Ulysses find the purpose of his life in karting. When you're in the car, you're in the car, what do you feel? Alors au début, bah, je pense que comme beaucoup de pilotes, on ressent toujours la, la pression. Après, on est concentré, on est... moi je suis dans ma bulle, je me concentre sur technique de pilotage et après bon, j'ai toujours la pression au départ parce qu'on on se dit euh, qu'est-ce qui va se passer, est-ce que je vais être devant, est-ce que je vais me faire pousser, est-ce que je vais... Euh, je me pose toujours cette question mais après euh, voilà, c'est... Euh, on est dedans, on est dedans. Tell me if he looks like an autistic boy. And the people who work in Euronascar said that at the beginning he didn't look into anyone's eyes. But thanks to motorsports, he's totally reborn. So basically, his family understood that motorsport was the best medicine in the world. Until at the age of 20, he was officially diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. Ulysses is unable to live a normal life due to his condition. At the age of 13, he dropped school, and as of today, he cannot work. But when he gets to the racetrack and starts breathing the motorsport atmosphere, he becomes a normal guy. He gets terrified when a firecracker goes off, but he's relieved when NASCAR turns on. This is just one of the many reasons because this series is called Racing is Life. That's because racing is life. Race 1, second round of the Euro NASCAR Championship. What seemed to be the entry-level category turned out to be almost as difficult as the pro. A young prodigy from the small island of Cyprus in pole position. A special French guy, former European champion in second place. A YouTuber who had pursued the lifelong dream of racing in third place. And at his side from the Czech Republic, the reigning European champion. And the list goes on until the 28th position. We drove super fast, the same lap times as the pro, and it's going to be a very tough battle. 31 laps on one of the most beautiful tracks in the world. I want to take home my first real win, not a victory by default, but a victory won on track until the checker flat. I want to jump off the roof of the car and scream with joy in the front of everybody, but it would not be easy. Today, I'm gonna have to do some kind of magic if I wanna do that. go ready for race one 31 laps to go unfortunately for this race i will not have the team radio i mean we had it but we couldn't record it so but the good news is that starting third is maybe better than second why because i will be in the inside in turn two and turn three and i may have a chance to pass del so let me remind you the starting procedure rolling start two rows and as soon as the green light comes on we are racing Delso didn't start well, come on. Uh, going to be, by the looks of it, Siortis, who leads into the first corner. Yes, he does. And Alberto Nasca has managed to get himself through into second place. He wants to try again in the outside. He will never make it. Come on, let's go. Okay, I'm second. It's a great start. Siorcis has gone like a rocket and it's already flying away. I must not let him escape. Whoa, what a 
sideways. Too much in the throttle. So the situation behind this table and in front of me it's yours is, is getting an advantage. We're still driving slowly. He did 49.7, I did 49.9. Maybe the tires are cold, maybe too much fuel, I don't know. Still slow, 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 slow. Now that I have free track and good tires, it's so important to set the fastest lap time now because I want to remind you that the fastest lap times of today will make the starting grid of tomorrow. No, 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 did I break the gearbox? Oh my god, I don't know what happened. Maybe I just made a mistake and put the fourth gear instead of the second. I, I had a heart attack. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, Ciorcis is gone. The saw is still there. The race is still on. Anyway, I, I worked out the problem. I mean, the team has made a setup change to compensate the tire wear and to help me do faster turn one and then consequentially turn two. And the thing is that in turn one, the car is flying now, but I still didn't get used to it to the rest of the track. And you know, I'm just paying an experience on this car because it, it, it takes a while to adapt. Nothing, we keep pushing, the race is still long, so anything can happen. Lap nine, here comes the first lap cars. It's normal, the track is short, we are 28. Let's just not lose time. Come on, come on, come on, come on! I'm wasting my time here! And Delso is back again! Finally, good lap time. I finally figured out the car, but Ciorcis did 49.347. <laughs> thousandths of a second faster than me. Damn. If he stays like that, he will be on pole tomorrow. So is driving fast behind me, so I cannot save tires, but I need to keep. Oh, 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 oh! My God, there was a car spun in the straight. Woo. We passed by at 140 kilometers an hour flat. I lifted a bit, but the saw behind me, I don't know if he lifted. Woo. That guy has no fear. and the saw is not giving up behind me. I just want a safety car. That would be amazing. Oh, 
I see a car stopped in turn one. Please, safety car, please, safety car. Yes, yes, safety car, safety car. Woo! Very, very, very good. Now we're all back together so I can try to fool the horses. Now let me explain how the safety car works because it's different than Formula One. And even in every track might be a little different. Now, as long as the safety car is there, we're warming up the tires as normal. But when they say safety car in this lap, we will line up once again in two rows like in the rolling start. And the procedure here is the same as the rolling start. We get on the straight and when we see the green light, we can accelerate, but we cannot overtake until we pass the control line. So it's going to be exactly like the rolling start. Very important is that we have to keep 3700 RPMs in second gear because if you go too high, you are too fast and you will get penalized because after the race they can review the telemetry. Okay, safety car in this lap. Back again in two rows, I will start second, so this time I will have a disadvantage on Del So, but I can try to pass Ciorcis in turn one. There we see Paul Giffro getting incredibly lucky in avoiding the barriers in that replay. But back to live action, back to two by two formation. And Vladimir Ciorcis is going to be having to work very hard indeed. He's going to need to get his elbows out now with the likes of Nasker on his outside. Del So behind him. Martin Dubek, he can't rule Wait, him out either. I, I don't see the red light. What, what's going on? The, the, the traffic light is not... No, 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 it's turned green. No! He made the same move on Del So earlier and Nasker hasn't got a good start at all. Del no, no way, Del So screwed me. I must overtake Nasker him now. to third place. Almost side by side between Dubek and Hayden. Come on, come on, come on, I'll train the outside. Come on, come on. Ah, come on, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Come on, come on. Ah, God, so. <sighs> Graham Hill bent. Running out of room. No, not quite. I, I can't believe it. He got me. The light confused me because I thought it was the same as the start. But in the start, we saw the red and then the green. But in the restart, we didn't see the red and then suddenly green. So I, I thought it was a problem with the lights and I just missed it. Anyway, after the restart, many spotters reported half of the drivers because we were not properly lined in the restart. Why? Because the rules state that in the start and restart procedure, every file has to follow the white lines that determines that the, the, the starting grid, right? And half of us were off the line. But what's the problem? That here in Brands Hatch, for each side of the track, you have two rows and nobody told us which one to follow. So I just followed the specific one, which was the wrong one. But how could I know it if I started from the right and now I'm starting from the left and I don't know which one is the right one. As you can see, I wasn't the only one who didn't get it right. So you can't penalize half of the grid for something they didn't know. Okay, lap 23, two thirds of the race. Anything can still happen. I'm not giving up now. Look at how fast I'm going in turn one. Look at that. This setup has made me a lot better, but I still can't quite get it on the rest of the track. But you know, that's good because here in Brent's Hatch, you can overtake in turn one and turn two. So that's where I have to be the fastest. Ah, I'm still too far from the soul. Not yet, but I have more. And that's what my engineer is telling me on the radio. I'm faster, I must overtake him. Oh, and the 18 car is off. Oh, Capelli. Watch out, watch out, and our car in the gravel. Watch out. Tell me the safety car is coming out. Tell me the safety car is coming out. Safety car is now out with five laps to go. Safety car. Yes. Woo.
Okay, lap 30 out of 31. Big news via radio. The race will go in overtime. What does that mean? It means that the race cannot be over under the safety car, so the race control gave more laps. This means that the race will end in lap 32. This is the cool thing about Euro NASCAR, that almost never a race ends under the safety car. So, final restart of the race, two laps to go, anything can happen, and this is my last chance to turn things around. The most beautiful thing an athlete can experience in the race is when the body and the mind become one. Some call it competitive trance, some call it flow, and some call it ultra instinct. You act without thinking, and you do things that you thought were impossible before. I've been lucky enough to experience it a few times, but I couldn't tell you how you get into it. It's kind of like dreams. You find yourself into them, and when you ask yourself, how did I get in there? You have no idea. I am inside the Euronascar at Brands Hatch, ready to go. No thoughts, no emotions. Radio silence. Two laps. I'm in the flow. Is up 